I'm Sang Yubi from KAIST, and this is a joint work with my colleagues, Tech Chen Li, Xiong Li, and my advisor, Sue Sun. Today, I'm going to talk about our research on penetration testing to find file omnod vulnerabilities in PHP web applications. So, omnoding functionality is a de facto standard in modern web applications to encourage users to interact with others by sharing their own contents. So, omnoding file requires the following procedure. So let's assume that user A uh, wants to upload his NDSS logo image, then he should send an upload request via the HTTP POST method. Then the extractor um, in a PHP interpreter extracts the file from this upload request and moves it to a temporary directory. Next, the web application checks the admissibility of this file through content filtering checks, especially in these content filtering checks, uh, exist, it, these content filtering checks exist to block users uh, from omitting dangerous file types. If there are no flaws in, in the omitted file, the web application moves it to the designed directory under the control of the web application. So now, user B, uh, if user B want to, get, uh, want to get this file, he should access the URL of this file from a browser. And finally, he can get the rendered image from a browser. As I said before, content filtering checks exist to, uh, to block users from uploading dangerous file types. So let's assume that the attacker tries to upload this malicious webshell.php file. Then this file can be discredited by content filtering checks because it does not conform to the developer's expectations. For a more detailed explanation, uh, let's assume that we have these content filtering checks in a web application. First, there is a blacklist that contains an admissible file name extension, and note that PHP is one of the security critical file name extensions. Next, because the, because the, the extension of the omelette the file name is PHP, this file will be rejected by the application. So then, what happens there are bugs in content filtering checks so that the, um, the malicious website.php file is successfully omitted to the web server. The result is that a system administrator may accidentally run this uh, executable, or the exist, existing other bugs have a chance to execute uh, this omitted PHP file. This situation implies a potential code execution risk, and um, this file on the box is known as UFU vulnerability. However, that's not all. The situation has been getting worse when the attacker can access this file via its URL. So this means that the adversary is capable of conducting arbitrary code execution by invoking the URL, and the web server can be compromised by the attacker via server-side command, in command injection attacks. So we call this as UEFU vulnerability. And this vulnerability also can be occurred at the client side. Let's assume that the attacker uh, can upload her HTML file with malicious JavaScript code. Then the victim client um, can access this file via its URL, and the victim's browser will execute the script. So this means that the attacker is able to trigger the arbitrary JavaScript code with the vulnerable web server origin on the behalf of a victim. So in summary, the, cons the consequences of UEFU vulnerabilities are triggering remote code execution in both web server and web browser. So, then, so our ultimate goal is to find these UEFU vulnerabilities. So how can you systematically find these vulnerabilities? So first, uh, we should definitely bypass content filtering checks. However, Different, app different applications implement their own con con content filtering checks so that it is difficult to understand their logic without auditing their source code. And second challenge is that the omnoded file should be executed in a PHP interpreter or, or in, the, in the browser, web browser. So this means that the ex execution semantic and constraints should be preserved in their execution environment. So to clarify the second challenge, let's assume that the attacker um, tries to upload this file with, malicious, uh, with, with weird extension foo. Then um, this file can be, uh, can, can be uploaded to the web server according to the previous example of content filtering checks. 
So this means that she can bypass, she can bypass content fitting checks in somehow. However, when she accesses this file via its URL, uh, she cannot trigger the execution of website full. And note that a PHP interpreter is only uh, invoked for PHP stack extension, and website full does not uh, preserve this execution semantic. So uh, for successful remote code execution, the execution semantic of the unloaded file should be, executed, uh, should be preserved in their execution environment. So in summary, these are the challenges uh, in finding UEFU vulnerabilities, bypassing application specific checks, and preserving the execution semantic. There have been previous studies on detecting various web vulnerabilities, including cross-site scripting and SQL injections via static analysis, dynamic analysis, and similar execution. However, they didn't consider to find UEFU vulnerabilities. So the key question for our work is that, is there any testing tool um, that can efficiently handle all these challenges? So to answer this question, we propose here our framework, Fuse, which is a penetration testing tool to find file on the vulnerabilities. Our approach is like this. At first, our system sends initial unload request uh, with malicious file, with, with malicious file. Then uh, this file will be reject, may be rejected by content fitting checks. In this situation, we mutate the unload request so that it can trigger UEFU vulnerabilities. So our design goal is to overcome all the challenges I mentioned before. So first, to bypass and to handle the diverse application-specific content filtering checks, we investigated the root causes of UEFU vulnerabilities. Next, to preserve the execution semantic of the omelette file, we analyzed the source code of web servers and browsers so that we can, ex we can manually extract execution constraints. With this intuition, we carefully designed the 13 mutation operations and we leveraged those operations to mutate the unload request. With this scheme, our system passes three modules. At first, it takes a set of set files, HTML, JavaScript, PHP, and XHTML. Then, the mutator mutates the unload request of those files using our mutation operations. Uh, now that we have mutated unload request, the unloader sends uh, these requests to the web app web application. Next, the validator checks whether the, um, whether the mutated unloaded um, request succeeds in unloading file and obtains it, its URL. And by accessing this URL, the validator checks whether the unloaded um, file is executable or not. Now, and finally, it is enough to know how we mutate the unloaded um, request. So before introducing how we did, let's see what structure an unloaded um, request has. From the, point of view, from the point of view of the file, each element is represented as, is represented as follows. First, file name is the file name itself, and the content type is the MIME type of a file. And finally, content is the binary content or plain text of a file. Now, uh, we introduce our mutation operations with their objectives. So let's assume that we have these content fitting checks in a web application. In this, so in this study, we actually tried to find five objectives that trigger common mistakes that exist in real-world content filtering checks, such as in this example. So first, the objective is to exploit the absence of content filtering checks. We note that several applications do not perform any checks on incoming unload request. So uh, we achieve this goal by sending initial unload request without applying any mutation. The second mistake is the incorrect type emphasis based on content. So the example of the mutation operation corresponding to this objective is M1 prepending a resource header. For example, uh, it prepares PNG header to the, to the content of a file uh, to confuse signature of the file type. However, according to a content snipping algorithm in the browser engine, this file will be executed as HTML in the web, web, web browser. And the third objective is related to incomplete blacklist based on extension. We observed that different applications differ in specifying ex extension blacklist. So to achieve this mistake, M4 changes a file extension. 
For example, our system changes a file extension from PHP to PHP 5 uh, so that it can bypass incomplete breakfast based on, con based on extension. And the next objective is to exploit incomplete keyword checks based on content. So for example, M5 replaces PHP tags with short tags like this. So because the developer misses to add the short tags in keyword list, we can bypass content fitting checks. And finally, fifth objective is related to content type. We observed that um, several applications accept the MIME type uh, MIME type specified in the content type without checking the actual type of the content of a file. So for example, M3 changes the content type of an upload request with image dash change so that it can bypass content type checks. So that's all of the mutation objectives we studied. Now we can assume that multiple kinds of checks are deployed in, in the content return checks so that uh, it can prevent UEFU vulnerabilities. However, our system is able to bypass these checks by combining mutation operations. For example, um, Fuse combines M1 and M3 so that it can achieve multiple set of, uh, set of objectives. And finally, please refer our paper if you are interested in more details about our mutation operations. So this is how this works. Now, I'll show experimental evaluations on our system. We ran, uh, we ran experiments on recent version of 33 popular PHP web applications, including WordPress and Joomla. And we ran views on Apache 2 web server and various PHP engines. So first, we evaluate the efficiency in terms of re uh, finding real-world bugs. So our system found 30 UEFU vulnerabilities in 23 applications. And we got 15 CVEs from nine applications. And eight of them have been patched, and the five bugs are being patched now. So let me introduce one of the findings of our system from microweaver application. So the abstracted content, content filtering checks in microweaver is like this. And to bypass these checks, Fuse first leverage M13 operation. Especially, it appends a bytes header of a JPG file uh, to the end of the content. As a result, the unloaded file has two file signature, and uh, it, ca it causes a target application to fail to infer the correct MIME type. Next, uh, to, uh, to bypass second checks, Fuse changes a file extension from PHP to PHT. So by combining those two muta mutation operations, um, we, we can perform remote code execution on microweaver application. In next evaluation, we compare the views against two state-of-the-art art file on the testing tools. So first, Foxploider is an open source unloaded vulnerability scanning tool, and unloaded scanner is an extension for purpose pro. And we ran those tools on the same benchmarks and counted unique vulnerabilities. And as a result, uh, Fuse found more vulnerability, vulnerabilities than Foxplorator and Amato Scanner. Especially, excepting for two bugs found by Amato Scanner, all the bugs Foxplorator and Amato Scanner found were also found by Fuse. Then, why our system found more bugs than the others? First, Fuse has a more diverse extension that can be used to uh, mutate file name extension. Uh, so, and the next, uh, next reason is that uh, we have a more diverse mutation operations and uh, their combinations uh, to generate more diverse, um, diverse unloaded requests. And finally, our system is stronger than the others in terms of retrieving URLs. Uh, so especially if you can get the randomized URL of the unloaded file by deploying file monitor in, in web server. So if you are interested in this, uh, please refer our paper. And finally, we discussed the root causes of UEFU box found. We observed that the most common mistake causing UEFU box vulnerabilities was using an incomplete blacklist or uh, float whitelist of extensions. And uh, this research highlights that inferring Unload file types based on user-provided ex user provided extension uh, is not enough to prevent UEFU vulnerabilities. 
So despite of our results, our system has some points to improve. We note that uh, there may exist other mutation operations that we didn't consider. However, we believe that uh, our studied objectives are general enough to suggest new mutations. And we manually extracted the execution constraint and um, reflected those constraints when we were designing 13 mutation operations. So the automatic extraction of those constraints and the reflection that on mutations are interesting technical challenges. So conclusion, we propose our system a penetration testing tool designed to find UEFU vulnerabilities. We hope that our system can be a baseline for the further future research to find this UEFU vulnerability. And finally, we open our source code of penetration testing tool on GitHub to boost future research. So if you want to utilize our framework, please visit our repository. Especially, don't forget to click the star. With that, thank you very much, and I'll be happy to take